Chris Taylor, candidate for Virginia Beach mayor. And uh, we're asking everyone what's your age. I'm 40 years old. All right. And what made you decide to run for this position? So I had set a goal uh, about 10 or 12 years ago that I wanted to run for mayor one day in my hometown. Um, and then I realized there had never been a mayor that had run, run as mayor without being on city council. And so that was one of the motivations was to run for council, understand the process, understand how we did things in our city. Um, but as a native, uh, someone that's from here, raising their children here, his mother grew up here, family's been here over 200 years. I love the city and I didn't see any young people running for office. So that meant that there was not representation from my demographic uh, age group on our city government, at our city government, and with a city of 450,000 people, that was a concern for me. And so you've been on council uh, two years. What made you decide to, you know, not complete that term and just go run for mayor now? So, um, without divulging, you know, private conversations, I was approached by some individuals that had stated that in the, certain people were not going to run. They were kind of done with their time serving, and so that played into it as well as sitting there for two years looking at how the leadership was, looking at the decisions we were making. I thought that I could, my skills, talents, and abilities could be better used in the position of mayor where there's uh, the ability to set the agenda and then also to represent our city on a national, local, regional level uh, with a little bit different, uh, I guess, flavor and, and leadership style. And what would that leadership style be? So first, I think uh, we have to have uh, an individual that engages all stakeholders, uh, all parties, all communities. Um, instead, we've had um, instances where if certain special interest groups or certain stakeholders reach out, for instance, the capstone deal, the city council as a group decided we wanted to hear that presentation, yet uh, certain stakeholders from the oceanfront reached out to our current mayor. All of a sudden, the presentation was canned. Look at the aquarium recent ordeal, or I call chaos where we had uh, the mayor and our vice mayor uh, attend a meeting where the liaison should have been there, should have been there. The liaison was asked not to go, and the motivation was so that there would be no public knowledge of the meeting. That's not leadership for a city of 450,000 people. I'll provide transparency and engage all interested parties versus just those that may or may not have donated to my campaign. Um, the. Uh so you donated to your campaign. Are you saying that's why those individuals were taken to that meeting? Would you believe that's Well, not, not the individuals happened? that were taken to the meeting, but for instance, uh, we had an, uh, a situation yesterday of, of an issue with supporting the fire uh, with additional medical services. Um, I was very vocal uh, this budget cycle to support our EMS, that we could do support for the fire without collective bargaining yet the two individuals that placed it on the agenda with our mayor had just received $30,000 in campaign donations in the last three weeks. From? Fire union. So maybe there's no correlation there, um, but I take issues based on the merit, not based if you've given to me or supported my campaign. The, uh, you talk about campaign finance supports. Uh, you know, the most recent was filed, I believe, last week. Yes. Um, and clearly you do not have the cash advantage. Uh, one thing that came up to me, uh, it, it, I mean, the incumbent has the cash advantage in this case, which is often the case. Uh, one thing though I did look at is um, campaign finance expenditures too. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you about the, the SeaWorld Busch Gardens yes. expenditures. What were those about? Yes, yeah, so I think, um, we have three huge attractions and amusements in the state of Virginia. The aquarium is the third most visited, King's Dominion and Bush Gardens. So what I did as a millennial, young, not someone that's been running the same campaign, was we ordered baseball jerseys and uniforms that said Chris Taylor on the front 24 for mayor. Uh, one of the cities that's most represented in visitations to Bush Gardens is Virginia Beach. And so advertising, I went there uh, to advertise, to campaign, and picked up at least 50 to 75 votes by wearing my Chris Taylor jersey. People say, oh, are you from Virginia Beach? My granddad lives down there. I go to Kellum. You're the Chris Taylor on the signs. And so there's no campaign finance rules or laws that prevent you from campaigning at Ocean Breeze or some, if you look at campaign, they go to the ABC store. 
some expenditures are at fancy restaurants. How many, uh, since this is investigative, how many of our local candidates are spending money at Bruce Thompson's Marriott? Are we looking into what they're doing at the Marriott or do we just accept it as it's a hotel? So there's more people at Busch Gardens than the Marriott and at $149 to have access to thousands of people that may or may not be in our city, uh, I think it was a great expense. So and is that just you going or is your family going as well? Yeah, I, I've gone by myself, I've gone with my family, my wife works with my campaign because it's grassroots, so unlike Mr. Mayor or Mr. Cummings, I don't have the ability to hire a consultant at $3,000 a month or Miss Sandy Canada to do my event scheduling, so my wife does all my event planning. Uh, we have pictures of all of our events and where we go. The kids are in CT for VB hats, so we are working. And there's no difference in Jen Kagan's campaign hiring a bunch of high schoolers and giving them money. I just don't have uh, a million dollar budget. So, uh, and you're correct, there's nothing uh, uh, illegal about it. Um, the one thing though, there's around $2,000 where it says you were reimbursed, but doesn't say exactly what that reimbursement was for. I know you're a big transparency guy. Do you have- So in our, in our VPAP, we put in the notes in the comment system what it is. Some people are specific, some are not. I actually put in there, it doesn't print that on the VPAP. So if you were able to see the raw reports, you'll see some campaigns actually list reimbursement for this or reimbursement for that. Mine, I do. Uh, but that doesn't show on the report. It just shows Chris Taylor in the amount. And I went through the reports, and I'm actually one of the candidates that has received the least amount of reimbursements. Candidate Rick West, Mayor Rick West, uh, had uh, plenty of reimbursements. Shannon Glover, Michael Berlucci. Uh, so my thing is, if we're going to scrutinize, let's be consistent, because Chris Taylor's is actually one of the least amounts for reimbursements. And what were those reimbursements for? That's all. I don't have them in front of me. Okay. Um, but if I went through some of them, uh, if we're doing an event planning and I go to the store, I don't have my debit card, I pay for something, I keep the receipt, I reimburse. Um, it's that simple. The, um, <clears throat> you were saying this a little bit before we got on camera, is that you uh, have the ability to, I'm going to use it, tick people off. How do you feel in the mayor seat? Will you be able to work with people across the that have used different, different, different? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, um, I, I think there's a misconception. We're not elected to be best friends. We're not elected to go to each other's birthday parties. Uh, that's the problem with Virginia Beach City Council, I believe, is too partisan. Uh, you see people at, uh, I mean, look at the first day of voting. You had members of city council at the voting register's office taking political pictures just with partisan candidates. The Virginia Beach City Council is nonpartisan. And so, whether you are best friends or not shouldn't determine how you vote on an issue, whether you want to support a fellow Democrat on an issue because that's their stance versus the community, that shouldn't come into play. And so I, I'm the only candidate that worked at any Fortune 100 company. In 2012, I received a collaboration re, uh, reward award at DuPont. So I don't, have an, I don't have an issue with collaborating, and that's the concern is if you don't get along with someone or you're not at their wedding, people think that there's this conflict or strife. We just don't have to be best friends. And guess what? Politicians and elected officials don't always agree. Um, but when it's the citizens that you put at the forefront and you make them the priority, we should be able to overlook personal differences. And that's why uh, off the record, I just told you I talked to Mayor Bobby Dyer this morning. You asked, oh, he called you? And I said, no, I called him. We're not working against each other. We still have a city to manage and work together to make sure that the people are represented with elected officials that uh, act, actually act like grown-ups and not children. You were saying, I mean, you've been accused yourself uh, sometimes of being harsh in these work sessions, uh, going after other council members for their actions. Uh, do you believe that's a fair criticism? I mean, criticism is going to be criticism. I mean, I don't. if you can name one... Uh, professional athlete uh, or politician that's never been criticized, uh, please get out the list. Uh, the former Le uh, mayor, Lewis Jones, rest in peace, told me when I met with him when I announced I was going to run for city council, I better get tough skin. I mean, I, when I do bring these issues up, I've never had anyone tell me I was lying. So maybe we just need to be a little bit more adult and realize if you take a vote in a position, why can't someone ask a question about that position? Um, if there's one thing, what would you say is your greatest strength? And then what would you say is your, the thing that you believe personally you need to work on? Uh, I think my greatest strength is I'm a native. I understand what our city 
has been, and what it is and what it could be. Uh, that is a strength that many people do not possess if you're not from here. Um, you look at the, the main issues, school modernization, um, affordable housing, um, education. If you're not from here, uh, for instance, if you're from Jersey and you move here, you would see that our real estate rate is low. But if you're a local and you continue to see your assessments going up and you're paying more taxes, you don't see this as this really affordable place. So I think being a native, being a local, having a, a really good understanding of our city um, is a strength. I think a weakness is um, I don't have uh, 30 years of relationships with developers, with stakeholders, with the political, uh, um, I'll say, uh, the, the, the behind the scenes players. And so that does hinder my ability sometimes to uh, either interact or, or engage in certain issues. For example, last week there was a, the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce hosted a legislative session well, I had emailed the chamber and said I was not interested in their endorsement. And I said that to everyone this time. Well, Councilman Taylor didn't get invited to the legislative reception. That doesn't make sense. If you invite the city councils of all the cities, then the mayors, you should invite all city council members. So a weakness is when you don't have those relationships, when you haven't been entrenched in politics for 30 years, it puts you at a disadvantage. I, bringing up something, um, there's also been criticism that I know you're one of two liaisons to RAC, but you haven't been at uh, more than half of the meetings this year. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Uh, I emailed the chair of RAC. I was not at a meeting, and one of the RAC members, Michael Motch, uh, made public comments of a private conversation we had that was out of pocket. It was out of line. It was disrespectful. Many people in the room felt he was uh, just out of touch. I emailed the chair and said I had a concern with that. Uh, I worked at DuPont, one of their core values was respect for people. If I have a private conversation with you, I don't take that to a public committee and throw you under the bus, especially as a liaison to city council. And one thing I've seen in this city because of the cronyism and the partiality is a lack of respect and honor for those that are actually in the elected position. And so I asked the chair to address uh, Mr. Motch. He didn't want to address Mr. Motch because they were friends. And so I told them I would not be participating as a liaison to these meetings until the issue was addressed. And I'm glad you bring up attendance because there's many council members as these annual reports come out that have less than 50% attendance records. And so you're gonna find with Chris Taylor, if you're gonna uh, scrutinize, let's look at the whole council. Let's look at all liaisons. Look at the aquarium, Brett. We had an, a, a liaison in Worth Remick that did not go to the most important meeting to acquiesce to the mayor. That's important. So what's the attendance record for all of our council liaison reports and our, and our responsibilities? And so I don't go to the RAC meetings because there's a lack of leadership, no accountability and responsibility for when members show disrespect to the liaisons and there's no answer for it. That's not how we're supposed to operate our boards and commissions. But shouldn't you then say, okay, take me off the rack. I want to go somewhere else. Let someone that's, else do that's it. That's not my job. That's the job of the vice mayor and the mayor. They appoint liaisons to these commissions. But can't you go to the vice mayor and mayor? I've asked Rosemary Wilson to remove me from several, and she has not. Okay. That's on the record. Sure. That's fine. I didn't know that. Yeah. And again, if that's a good point, should all council members that are failing to attend meetings that they don't have an issue with anyone ask to be removed? And the question, the answer would be yes, but why haven't they? We have staff liaisons that have put over 3,000 hours in supporting these boards and commissions. We get reports. Why can't you, do you have to go to every meeting? Can you read the report? Can you read the output from the agenda? Or do you, is the expectation for all council member liaisons to have 80% attendance, 90% attendance, and if that's the case, let's be consistent. And on the rack, though, wouldn't it be, as a mayor, your, you know, your responsibility or someone to be a candidate for mayor to go and try to work that issue out? Which issue? The issue where you feel there's a I've spoken to the chair, I've spoken to the vice chair, I've spoken to the individual person. It's their responsibility to be responsive. If they don't respond, I have to keep moving. I'm on 10 boards and commissions. So I don't have any extra responsibility to RAC than I do the BAC, Bayfront Advisory Commission, or the Housing and Advisory Board, or the Military Economic Development Advisory Council. 
So I don't owe Rack any response. I don't owe them anything in here. The vice mayor was the former liaison. Brett, I'd love you to look at her record because she's on the record saying she didn't go to any of the meetings. That's your vice mayor. So again, my problem, one of the reasons I'm running for mayor, there's a lack of consistency in this city. We don't scrutinize the same things. There's partiality and people are tired of it. I wanted to ask you about the, uh, go back to the, um, you brought it up, I can't, I can't think of it. You know, the convention center. Yes, uh, Capstone. Capstone, thank you. I was about to yeah. say Bridgestone. That's yeah. not what I'm looking for. Uh, did, in that case, you were advocating for him, for uh, the, the principal Mr. there. Mr. Norm get, Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins, to get a, a fair show, presentation. presentation. Is it fair to say, though, you were not necessarily supportive of the project? I've never said I was supportive of the project. But again, you talk about leadership. Our vice mayor, our mayor have no more authority than any council member. How is it there was no concern, and I was going to the RAC meetings at that time, too. Again, I don't really like impartiality. I like for us to be fair and consistent. No one asked when I dropped the bomb that Governor Bob McDonald was going to RAC. That was a RAC meeting, if you remember Stacy Parker wrote about it. How did I know about that? I was at the RAC meeting, right? Subcommittee, yeah. Yeah, subcommittee. I was going to uh, subcommittee meetings. So there's no issue with attendance. It's disrespect. But back to Capstone. We agreed as a council to hear the presentation. That's a fact. The mayor does not have veto power in our charter. The media should be concerned that you have a mayor that acts with outside of their authority. No one said a peep other than Stacy Parker because I reported it. So you have a mayor that called the city manager and they called Norm and said, hey, don't come on Tuesday. It was Friday, as well as the former deputy city manager, Taylor Adams, did not communicate to council. That's a problem. And then canceled the meeting. I talked to Norm that day and he said it went something like this. Norm, don't come on Tuesday. It was Good Friday. And he said, what the, what happened? No response. We don't want to hear a presentation. And again, because you're, you want to be consistent as a reporter, the same thing happened with audit for the aquarium. They literally told Lyndon, it's on the record, Brett, don't come on Tuesday to present. Well, they didn't talk to anybody on city council other than the vice mayor, liaison worth Remick. They don't tell this. The, the auditor what to do. So my issue is not as mayor, will I be able to work together? Will I be able to be a liaison, which the mayor's not a liaison to any boards and commissions. How many have you seen him at? Zero. And so you, we need a mayor that has integrity, that will play fair and be consistent. And so any issue you bring up, I have no problem talking about because no one said, why do we have a mayor that vetoes a meeting but they don't have veto authority? Hmm. Well, they do set the, they have the authority on the agenda. Once the agenda is set with approval from city council, the mayor cannot take anything off the agenda. If we as a body agree to hear from someone, the mayor can't just unilaterally go, I don't want to hear from that person. That's what happened. When, once the agenda is set, correct? The agenda was set. Norm was coming on that Tuesday. No issues from the media. Not a peep. I would have to go back and look and see that. I don't. Uh, well, I Stacey I Parker did because I called her and said this is a problem. So, you know, I, I have some concerns here in our city with the level of consistency from our leader uh, and our vice leader and our liaison. So I love this conversation because we get annual reports. Look at the attendance. Chris Taylor has some of the best attendance as it relates to boards and commissions if you compare them across the board. I was just asking about that one situation. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we have to continue to uh, inform the public with facts. Um, and again, you bring up really good questions. I would love for you to take a deep dive with all the candidates on their expenditures and receipts, and then their votes based on those receipts.